So now that we've established what linear electron flow was, and let's remember linear electron flow is a part of the light dependent reactions, there's another side to this coin of light dependent reactions, and that other side, and this will be the next flow chart, um, is cyclic electron flow. So this is going to be a much shorter flow chart. It's not as expansive as linear electron flow, but still an important idea to understand because it exclusively involves PS1. This process is only, 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 only at P700. And that is also another way to say PS1. It's only at P700. So what happens? Overall, uh, very sort of simply, we can say that P700 will say it absorbs a photon. Okay, we understand that. Uh, P700 is a reaction center, and that reaction center will get excited, and an electron will excite another, and another, and another, and all of that will be harvested, and eventually will absorb a photon completely. Once we've absorbed a photon, we have a high energy electron. That electron then has to be transferred. We understand this. This is all previous prior information. That electron is transferred to who? A primary electron acceptor of course, um, and that primary electron acceptor in this situation is actually going to be a ferredoxin. So we'll say the ferredoxin molecule. So once we've sent this excited electron at P700 to the ferredoxin molecule, we now have a new situation occurring. There's another possibility besides the one that we mentioned in the previous video. This electron can then cycle or cycles, cyclic cycles. Electron cycles um, through a cytochrome complex of the ETC. And remember, P700, everything thereafter it has a separate ETC. So we had PS2, right, which was uh, P, uh, P680 in other terms. That was going to, oops, let me just get out of that. Okay. That was going to, on a thylakoid membrane, all the way down an electron transport chain that reached. PS1, which is known as P700 in this situation. So this is an ETC, because remember, there, has, there was an electron that went down plastoquinone and cytochrome complex and plastocyanin up to here to fill the void that happened here. But there's actually another electron transport chain, let's imagine, that's here, and this is the one we're talking about. So this guy, PS1, absorbs a photon. There's an electron, let's imagine this being the electron, that gets very, very excited, and it goes to a primary electron acceptor, like ferredoxin. That circle represents ferredoxin, and that inside dot represents the electron it just accepted. And that ferredoxin now is going to actually cycle through a cytochrome complex and cause this process to happen over and over and over and over again. It's going to be a cyclic process of this separate electron transport chain. So we'll say like ETC2, and this is ETC1. They're two different electron transport chains. As this is happening, as this cycle is happening, all you should understand is that this cycle, this separate cyclic cycle, not related to the linear electron flow, actually pumps protons. And if it pumps protons, that means it creates a gradient. And if it creates a gradient, what does that mean? You should definitely know this by now. That means it definitely creates ATP. So this is the point of confusion that students have. People just thought, or we just established, that P700, it doesn't produce ATP. But that was only if we're talking about linear electron flow. From a linear electron flow perspective, P700 does not produce ATP. But from a cyclic electron flow perspective, it only occurs at P700, and only P700 produces a, and creates a gradient that will create an AT, will create ATP based off of that gradient. So um, we can just say that the electron itself, the one that's independent, that's a cyclic electron, goes down um, that new ETC, let's say ETC2 in, in sort of hypothetical terms, until um, it comes back to what? to its original place, to P700, because P700 is mad. P700 just turned into P700 plus when it leaves, and it's going to ask for it back really quickly, and the cyclic sort of nature of this is why it's called the cyclic electron flow. It only occurs at P700. What only occurs at P680 then? What only occurs at P680 is the production of ATP via linear electron flow. The production of ATP only occurs at P700 via cyclic electron flow. Be very comfortable interchanging those type of facts. 
And we're going to finally end this video by just summarizing what we just talked about. I think it's important to overall understand everything. Remember, cyclic electron flow, where does it only occur? Only PS1. Another way to see if, say PS1 is P700. In addition, this idea is all about the electron being cycled. Electron cycled through um, this system, through a separate system, separate entity. Um, this is going to cause H plus to be pumped. And if H plus protons are pumped, this is going to cause a gradient. And that causes a gradient. Of course, the end all be all will be eventual ATP production. So it's not accurate to say P700 does not involve or does not create any ATP whatsoever because it does not create ATP. P700 does not create ATP from a linear electron flow perspective. But from a cyclic perspective, oh yes, it definitely creates ATP because of this fact that we established right here. And then in addition, what you should know is that it does not create something. It does not create NADPH. No NADPH. But from a linear electron flow perspective, remember that electron that comes from P700 does create NADPH because of the NADP reductase. Remember, NADP was the final electron acceptor. Where did it get that final electron? From P700? Only if we're talking about linear flow. So if you get confused by this, definitely go back to the video and know the distinction between where the electron is coming from and what type of flow it's undergoing, whether it's cyclic or linear in nature. And in addition, there's obviously no O2 involved either here because there's no photolysis. You might be asking, then how does it fill its void? Remember, we said that um, electrons always just want to fill, or PS1 photosystems always want that void filled. It's filled because it goes in a cycle, cycle over and over and over and over again. As it's going through this cycle, we're pumping H+, pumping H+, and then we're going to utilize the H+, to create that ATP uh, overall production. But we do not make NADPH and we do not use O2, and that is cyclic electron flow.